Thank you. All right, thank you. We're so excited to be here. Um, in this, uh, this session, we'd like to tell you more about Contents Track and some of the real world solutions that exist by using Contents Track, not only for the contents restoration industry, but for policyholders, um, for insurance companies. And with that, we're, we're also really excited about the growth that we've experienced this last year. Um, our user growth has doubled. It's really catching on. And for me, that means that more homeowners are being helped in maybe a better way. Um, I think their contents items are being restored appropriately. They're being done quicker. We've seen an increase in jobs. Um, and I want you to pay specific attention to November and December of last year and compare that to November and December, sorry, of 2015 and compare that to November and December of 2016. Definite growth there. We're really happy about that. And the item count as well. I don't know if there's just more items in houses this year, but we've got to, it, it's really gone up. Um, I'm going to turn some time over to Ken here, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Thanks, Ryan. So we don't just show these numbers to toot our horn and say, look at this, Content Track's doing awesome. The reason we show you these numbers is we, when we show Content Track to service providers, maybe we show it to insurance carriers, um, uh, we get the question a lot, this sounds awesome. When can we start doing this? Or maybe from a carrier, like, hey, this is great. When are you going to take this from beta out into the, the real world? Um, we show you this so you know that that time is right now, right? So Contents Track has, has taken a, a really um, big step forward uh, since the last user's conference as far as um, the number of people that are using it, as far as how many policyholders are benefiting from it um, with their information being processed through Contents Track. We show these numbers so you can see that it's, it's essentially doubled in the past year. Um, we want you to know that the footprint of Contents Track is significant and that a lot of the, uh, the processes and these solutions and the proposals that we put before you today are not future things to, to kind of keep on your radar, right? So they're, they're things that we are doing today. Uh, we've got uh, Mark Watley, he affectionately goes by just Watley as our customer presenter here today. Um, he's gonna talk a lot about these. So we, we kind of have, um, we kind of have reality and then we kind of have um, what we want things to look like uh, in the industry as far as making things more streamlined, making things more efficient. Um, and he's here to, to be a real life example of that, of, of what the content industry can truly be and what it can become and, and where it already is trending. And we see content track is a very significant part of that. Now, um, I'm gonna have him come up here in just a minute and, and I'll kind of just throw some stuff at him. But before I do that, I um, wanna just paint a picture of a, a pretty typical contents claim. So in any given contents claim, we really have three stakeholders, uh, and, and not just contents, but any claim, but I'll, I'll talk specifically just about contents. So the first stakeholder that we have in any given contents claim is the contractor, okay? We need somebody to fix everything. Uh, the, second, uh, the second stakeholder that we have in kind of this three-legged stool is going to be the adjuster and or carrier. And the third one, of course, is the policyholder. Um, and, and of course, the most important as well. So let's walk through just kind of a traditional pack out uh, with those three stakeholders in mind. First of all, from the contractor's perspective. So the, uh, the homeowner, uh, typically it's, I mean, it can be any type of loss, but typically it's going to be a fire loss is when we're uh, gonna be doing con uh, uh, contents pack out. So um, the, the homeowner calls uh, the adjuster who then calls the contractor more than likely. I mean, it can happen different ways, but um, the contractor goes out on site um, roughly 50% of the content industry today, and this probably sounds crazy because we're at a tech conference where we're all talking about the coolest technologies and, and everything that we can do is in this industry, roughly 50% is using this right here to document a pack out. So they're literally pen, pad of paper. Um, if we're lucky, maybe the pad of paper is like a pre-printed pad of paper, so it's got like little boxes that prompt you what to fill out. And um, then we've got a digital camera where we're gonna take a bunch of pictures that has no attachment whatsoever to these, this uh, paper list that we've just created. 
Um, obviously, I don't need to get into it. That's gonna lead to a tremendous amount of redundancy later on in the claim when we need an estimate, we need a total loss list, we need just a generic inventory list so the homeowner knows what we have in our warehouse and that they just uh, had taken from their home. Um, and then we need a chain of custody because we need to know where stuff's at because we need to give it back to them eventually. This all sounds really obvious, um, but roughly 50% of the industry is using that, that pad of paper and that pen. Okay, now let's switch to the adjuster. So you've got, uh, you've got different, um, let's say you've got 10 contents claims that you're managing at any given time as an adjuster. Um, you've got contractors submitting information to you in different ways. So you've got um, maybe, maybe a couple CDs that have been hard mailed or dropped off to you by different contractors for different packouts. You've got a couple flash drives on your desk because they couldn't email the pictures over because the file size was too big. So you've got a couple, you've got a couple flash drives. Then you've got maybe a, a PDF that was emailed to you or, or hard copy delivered or, or maybe mailed to you. And so you get a very discontinuous user experience because nothing's the same. There's no standardization. There's no consistency. There's no way to kind of manage that all together. And then uh, worst is the policyholder who does not manage claims. This is hopefully the only claim or one of a, a couple that they'll, they'll file in their lifetime. And so they've had, we want to kind of touch, we want to kind of strike this today that um, the policyholder, they, they've gone through a pretty traumatic experience, right? So maybe their kitchen and their living room and, and a bathroom burned, or maybe it's more significant than that. And um, they don't know what you have. They don't know where it is. And you just gave them uh, maybe, a, you know, you've got the white, pink, yellow carbon paper. Maybe you peeled it off and gave them like the pink or yellow slip and said, here's what we took. We'll see you in 2018. And so now they don't know what's going on. Obviously, traumatic experience. They need a sense of solace. Instead, they just get more confusion. Um, the proposal that we want to put before you today is that contents track along with the other Xactware suite of products, namely exact contents and Xactimate, which uh, you're familiar with. I, I want to make sure it's clear as we talk about them today. Contents track is the inventory tool um, that a contractor would use on site. Exact contents is the total loss replacement value tool um, that, that adjusters and carriers use to value total loss items. And of course, Xactimate has all the cleaning prices for contents. The proposal that I want to put before you today that, that Watley and I will talk about is that Contents Track, along with these integrations, can bring this three-legged stool together. So we've got the policyholder, the contractor, the adjuster. There's almost a great Grand Canyon type divide between us on contents claims, more so than other claims in the industry. Um, we propose that we can bridge that gap today. Um, so before I, uh, before I invite Watley up, I just want to show a quick video to kind of introduce him. Um, this is actually... disaster strike. This is actually not a video that Xactware produced. Um, he produced this uh, himself, uh, his business did. Sometimes disaster strikes in the form of fire or water damage and your possessions need to be moved off site so repairs can be done. We had difficult experiences both times. Dan Smith went through two floods and two pack out services and decided could be done better. The name of our company is Emergency Packout Company. We have new equipment, crew that's smiling and friendly, putting people at ease, and we're helping people. Emergency Packout Company packs, removes, and stores your belongings, and then returns your items right where they were. Before packing anything, EPC first deploys cameras that render an immersive 3D tour and computer-generated Xactimate sketch of the property. This becomes a shared resource for the contractor, EPC, and the insurance carrier. Then, during packout, EPC uses Contents Track, which assigns QR codes, and that establishes a chain of custody for each possession. We know exactly which box it's located in, and we can retrieve it pretty easily. Second, exact contents let some catalog and value damaged items that aren't feasible to restore. The heat caused the plastic to discolor. We put the brand, the age, and input a description. Those details are approved by the policyholder and submitted to the insurance company, a huge time saver for the carrier. We do a great job working to get those payments processed by the insurance carrier so the property owner can get back to the way it was. And third, EPC uses Xactimate to determine the scope and cost of a project based on industry-set standard pricing. And it's that consistency that carriers have really come to appreciate 
Everything before it hits a carrier's desk is peer-reviewed, uh, it's tidy, it's sound, and it's consistent. EPC's Mark Watley is an Xactimate affiliate trainer who prepares estimators and adjusters to become certified in Xactimate. And it really creates this symbiotic relationship between those that we're doing business with and frankly forges stronger relationships and forges trust. From getting the call to completing the project, EPC is service oriented. Our clients genuinely appreciate what we do. That they're so relieved they give you a hug on the way out the door. That's a true measure of success. All right, let's go ahead and welcome Watley to the stage. Come on up. Oh. Thanks, Ken. Uh, I'm really humbled to be up here. Um, it's a unique experience. Uh, if you could, go to the next slide for me, Ken. I couldn't help but include this into our presentation. Uh, this is a picture taken by a friend of mine at one of the first users' conferences. And I was so enamored with the process, and I was an independent GC at that time, pretty small shop. I think we were still operating out of a garage. And it, this conference opened my eyes to a whole world that I didn't really know existed. I hardly knew what an IA was uh, at that point. And I ran up on stage after the breakout session. I'm like, hey, take a picture one day. And uh, uh, here I am. But notice there's nobody in those seats, right? Nobody in that audience. Uh, but it's a pleasure to have you guys out here at 2.15 on the final day of the conference. So thanks for uh, coming out. So anyhow, couldn't resist throwing that one up there, kid. So back to you. Okay, so uh, let's start here. Watley, you have a concept of drywall versus contents. Explain to us a little bit about what that is. It's something we talk about quite a bit internally uh, at our company. Uh, drywall versus contents. What possible correlation could there be? In our experience, when you're walking through a large-scale loss, think in the residential context, rarely are you walking down a hall, developing scope with a policyholder, walking them through what the process is going to look like, and they stop, and they, they point, and they look, and they go, Wally, uh, who's, who's going to take care of my drywall? Who's, who's gonna... That is the last thing on their mind. What's on their mind, guys, first and foremost at that moment? It's contents, right? That's what they care about. They do not care about the painting or the drywall. Not, not to say that's not important, and it will become an important part of the process, uh, but I think often contents gets treated in this industry as a bit of the redheaded stepchild. It's kind of the last part of uh, the claims process to become quite sophisticated and significant and kind of forgotten about. And I think that's a mistake on your larger losses, especially larger residential losses. I think it's your contents that really sets the tone of how that claim is gonna be processed, and that happens within the first four weeks. And it's your job as a professional, a contents professional, to provide you know, some kind of solace to that policyholder that you're gonna get them through and that things are on track. And if you can't do that, and you don't execute in a credible way, that claim uh, will tend to go sideways, and that's gonna splash on the mitigation guys all the way down to the repair. So uh, that's the concept of you know, drywall versus contents, where you come from. So we all care about our things quite a bit. Um, and, and I think when a homeowner goes through a claim like this, where their items are, are damaged and or destroyed, we really begin to realize how much we care about our stuff. Um, let's, let's pull this into it now, Watley. So um, a customer needs a sense of solace at that time. Um, how does a software like Contents Track meet that need for the policyholder? Got it. Well, we'd have to think back to the pre Contents Track days. So, you know, if you're not using any software, and what do you estimate that to be? 50% of the market? Yeah, we estimate um, right at about 50% of the industry doesn't use any packout software. Right. So I can only imagine, you know, um, Susie and Bill Anderson in the La Quinta Inn being re relocated that evening in the hotel after the fire. And they all of a sudden recognize that their $180,000 worth of contents that they worked their whole life to obtain is now in the hands of some individual that they barely know. And the only thing that they have is a partially legible uh, carbon copy piece of paper. And then they think about what just happened. And I think that's got to make them very nervous. And so the beautiful thing about introducing Contents Track is for us, 
we're able to get out there, and as, as soon as the pack out is concluded, issue a report, 74 pages, like beautifully organized. They do a great job of uh, compressing all the pictures so it can be sent via email uh, without being too large. And that policyholder then has every confidence that you know exactly what items you have, what uh, condition they were otherwise in. You can see how they're headed, whether they're going off to cleaning or they're going uh, simply to storage. And I think that's the solace Ken's talking about. When you get that email from our team, you go, these guys got it. I'm gonna get my contents back and those contents are gonna be pre-lost condition or better. I'm in good hands. I think that's really important. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit here. Um, I talked at the beginning of the meeting, um, and we've, we've touched on it again and again, the, the pad of paper issue. Um, it's, it's striking, particularly where we're at a, a tech conference. Um, but the, one of the most important issues, strictly from a contractor's perspective, from a contractor's perspective, is that of chain of custody. Now, um, any, any contractor is going to understand that. So uh, essentially what that means is the contractor needs to know what they have and they need to know where it is. Um, not to paint too glum of a picture, but it's a very serious issue that a lot of people don't know what's in their warehouse and second of all, let alone where it is. Um, that matters to a contractor very much, but Watley, what I want to ask you is, um, is you guys have really jumped fully on board with, with content track, kind of two feet in. Um, why does chain of custody matter first to the adjuster and second to the policyholder? Okay. So from the adjuster's perspective, when we're sending over that report, many times it's the same report um, that, you know, as I mentioned, 74 pages, has the forensic photography, et cetera. It gives the adjuster an instant 40,000 foot view of the claim. And they can see that, oh, okay, uh, these guys, there's some specialty electronics involved, so ERS is involved. Okay, I can see through the chain of custody that 17 boxes went out to CRDN, for example. And at that moment, they recognize, okay, uh, I can probably be expecting an invoice from those specialty contractors, um, so that doesn't come as a surprise to them. And it gives them you know, every confidence that we're gonna be able to execute and get them through the process. Uh, from the policyholder, you know, even more important, you know, we at Emergency Packout Co., we don't attempt to do everything. We just focus on the packout. Uh, and that makes us quite a bit different in that, you know, we don't even uh, do our hard goods cleaning in most cases, unless it's really small scale. We partner with the most credible uh, hard goods cleaner in every region that we operate. And we treat hard goods the same way that most every contents company treats soft goods. Right? We're not expected to be a dry cleaner. In the same way, uh, we've you know, uh, leveraged the larger and more credible players to take care of our hard goods. But we want to be transparent about that with our policyholders. And in fact, it's one of our selling points to the policyholders. Like, listen, we're not going to disconnect this stereo. The stereo is $35,000. We do a lot of private client high-end work at EPC. Uh, we want them to know that we're bringing in specialists that only deal with electronics every day. It's not our crew. Uh, but if part of that, that's, that would make them uneasy, Ken, generally. But if we augment that with, you know, the conscience track report and we show them that we know exactly what they have and that forensic photography supports that, then that kind of eliminates that, oh, God, where's my stuff? It's not even those guys. Somebody else has it. Now four people have it. It's the only practical way to have that conversation and bring that continuity to that policyholder. Great. Um, want to switch gears quite a bit. So I've been working with Contents Track for a few years, and this has become a really interesting concept to me. Um, I think everybody in the room probably knows, um, if, you, if you've had any exposure whatsoever to Contents Track, you probably know that Content Track integrates with Xactimate, which we, we consider to be a really, really big deal, and we found that it's a really big deal in the industry as well because it entirely el eliminates redundancy on, on a contents claim. Um, chain of custody is another major issue that we've seen that Content Track has been able to resolve in the contractor packout world. Um, but third, when I, I go, I literally go all over the all over the country. I do WebExes like crazy. There's always three points I want to hit on with contractors. Those are the first two. The third one um, is essentially pre-existing damages. We've t uh, coined a term for that at Exactware, and it, it's kind of trickled into the industry called moral hazard. Um, 
Watley, just want to, content strike aside, just want to talk for a minute about the correlation between customer satisfaction, customer being the policyholder, and moral hazard. Okay. Uh, not that we set out to address that. Um, and another term that we're more familiar with out of California is you know, fraud, waste, and abuse. And in this context, we'd maybe be looking just at the abuse aspect of it. But you would find yourself as a, a contractor, and, and generally when we approach a claim, we're there to serve and preserve the interest of the policyholder first and foremost, but not to the exclusion at, of the carrier, right? And we were put in the, kind of these, these tricky situations sometimes uh, prior to implementing uh, contents track and then later exact contents. So maybe an example of how starting things off on the right foot. You know, we recently had a case, $5 million home down in San Diego, right on the beach. Um, the, let's see, a hot water line blew uh, on the fourth floor, floor levels. And water ran for God knows how long. Like seriously, guys, like a week, okay? It was only shut off by the water department because the neighbors saw water that was pouring out from the second story from the sliding glass door. We're talking that kind of loss. And these policyholders, they were uh, over in Israel, right? They were international. <laughs> and uh, it was a really tricky claim to navigate. But by leveraging the software that Ken's putting forth at Contents Track, we, we were operating under the direction of uh, the private client carrier. All right, guys, get everything out, right? All the electronics, um, unbelievable uh, amounts of electronics, high-end stuff. Get everything out. We need it out of here because... What had happened is there was a hot water line, and this hot water line went for weeks, and it turned the whole house into a sauna, right? Anybody ever seen that happen? What did the, the place look like? It's mold everywhere, okay? Um, all of the chairs, right, tables, all busted. I mean, just incredible amounts of damage. So the only way to move forward on, in that project was get everything out of there. That actually happened. We took possession of all that stuff under the direction of the carrier. We had the neighbor sign off on our work authorization. Uh, we're having trouble communicating with uh, the policyholder, uh, but they were loosely aware of what was going on by way of the adjuster. We focused on getting that contents track wrapped up over to them immediately. We put a lot of resources on that thing, Ken. And I had the conversation myself because it was such a nuanced loss with the policyholder, and I was able to walk them through using your report, which, by the way, guys, is very customer-facing. If you guys um, have seen it, it definitely has a fresher, more usable feel than some of the other exact to mate reports that we're more used to. And, you know, I've kind of heard whispers as a trainer, like, oh, I wish they were more customer-facing, right? That comes with good and bad. But in this particular case, you really want the policyholder to get it. And I was able to walk them through straight away and keep that uh, claim on track. And so as it relates to, you know, how are we mitigating moral hazard, it was setting that precedent at the outset, keeping that client comfortable that they were going to be made whole. And we were able to take the exact contents or contents track integrate that over to Xactimate, and then subsequently take all of the items that we denoted in the field, right, that were marked for replace in the app, boom, right into uh, exact contents. Our team had that stuff valued, uh, depreciated, sent for digital signature over to Israel, and within six days, we had a, re a total loss valuation that was endorsed by the policyholder over to the carrier, and they were cutting check on day nine for their total loss. That started that claim off on the right foot. So that was a really impressive display and what really came to light, Ken, was if we transcend the scenario, we've all seen it, where there's a significant amount of total loss and the adjuster's really busy and they push over a document where the client's supposed to just inventory everything that they had and tell them when it was purchased and the approximate dollar amount, that's typically happened, Ken, at the very end of the claim, right? And that's sometimes on a larger fire, guys, is not happening until five months down the road, okay? By then, that client's just exhausted of being at La Clinta Inn. They felt wronged at some point in the process, and they look at that opportunity to be made whole. 
And that's like where their abuse comes in. And so we recognize just by default, we can't take credit for trying to solve a problem we weren't trying to solve. We were just provide, trying to provide an optimal experience for our policyholders. But we noticed if we injected ourselves in this process, and we were really the honest broker. We were the best equipped to get the policyholder to a place where they felt comfortable with the total loss valuation and then get that over to the carrier. Um, Ken, if, you, if I ask you, what percentage of your uh, contents could you name in your master bedroom right now? I bet I could get 30% if I worked pretty hard. Okay, so 30%, right? And I think we all kind of know that. If there's like a significant fire, you're like getting, getting this list from the adjuster, you're like, you can't name everything. You're infinitely frustrated. Like, your bottom drawer, okay? Uh, you're in on your nightstand. Like, what's in it? Do you know? Um, I can tell you there is a book in there, but I couldn't tell you the name of it, and I couldn't tell you anything else. Okay, short in list. Nice <laughs> but our team probably knew because we had the contents track app. Mm -hmm. We opened up that drawer. We took a picture of it, okay? Fires, guys, are devastating, but a lot of times with the forensic photography, you can at least tell what the heck you're looking at. It's very rare that it turns into complete lava and you're taking stuff out in shovels, right? So we are the best equipped to inventory that stuff at that moment, right? Recognize what's in your drawer. We noticed that he had a Phoenix flashlight down in the bottom of your drawer and you had a Leatherman wave, right? And all those little items that we forgot about that are significant. And so now you get a report from us quickly, right? Five days, all powered by your software, not possible without the software, okay? Starting with contents track, two exact contents. Boom, hit your desk. Ken, does this look good? You wanna sign Absolutely. off on this? Absolutely. Boom, you sign it, comes back to us. And see, we're not acting as the adjuster in that concept, and we don't, we don't seek to do that at all. What we're doing in that case is we're acting on Ken's behalf, right? And with your applied authority, and we're just helping get you through that process of inventorying and value and depreciating your items. And it's great for us because we don't have a dog in the fight. We don't participate in those economics. It's one of those unique aspects as a contractor, we do not participate in the total loss economics. So your policyholder is always gonna have a bias towards rounding up. You're rightfully so, your adjuster is gonna be there to manage claim cost. We come in, we are empowered by the exact where pricing list associated with exact contents. We shoot it over to you, done deal. So this concept of you know, abuse that tends to come up later or moral hazard, we've transcended that. We took care of that months ago. That's done deal. So it just never comes up. So it's really for refreshing for us that we just don't find ourselves in those scenarios very often anymore. So a lot of meat right there um, that, that I think probably jumped out at, at different pieces, probably jumped out at different people in the audience. Thing that jumped out at me though that I just wanna kind of clarify. So in your experience, content track is increasing customer satisfaction to the degree that you see a decrease in moral hazard. Absolutely, Ken. I can say that unequivocally. It's that simple. We're just getting out of ahead of the problems. It's just not happening anymore. Great, great. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and toss it back to Ryan, and then we're gonna kinda go into some future developments, talk a little bit about where Contents Track is going by the next year. Before you do, can I say one thing? Guys, since I, you know, this is a journey, right? And we might've caught a talk this morning about being on that journey. Uh, if I could get a little bit of your support, um, in your right hand, grab your evaluation form for me and hold it up. Okay, awesome. Um, set it down, write your name at the top of it. And then circle all fives right there on the right. <laughs> okay, don't do that, uh, don't do that. But if you could give us some feedback, we'd really appreciate it and uh, love to get some insight from you guys as to what you thought about the session. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Um, at the end of this, I want to let you know that we will have a question and answer. Um, and I'd like to invite Kelly Red, who's in the back. You can raise your hand. Afterwards, we're going to have him just kind of be up here by the stage. If, and then you can ask any of us any additional questions you might have. Sorry to call you out there, man. I, but we, we need you. We need you. So we've been talking a lot about the homeowner, the policyholder, and and kind of their, their experience and, and how Contents Track plays such a big role in, in improving that. 
One thing that we are really excited about, and we are um, just starting to work on this, is a customer portal. So you're a homeowner, you've lost a bunch of uh, items, that maybe they're damaged, maybe they need to be uh, completely replaced, and you give it to somebody, and they seem like good guys, um, but you might want to know like where those items went, maybe what's happening with them, and maybe even request that some of them get done quicker and be brought back to you. So we're going to be adding a button in um, it, when you're within a job in claim or sorry in <clears throat> contents track, and that's going to allow you to enter a claim experience. After you've created this claim experience, the customer will be able to see what items you have entered for cleaning, what ones are being replaced, and then we'll also, as I said before, be able to tell you what items maybe they, they need in a hurry or they're, they can't live without for another you know, 10 days or whatever the process takes. Maybe if they've forgotten to add a certain item that, has, that needs to be replaced or is non-salvageable, uh, they can add that item in here. And this will work uh, not only for a browser, but will also work on mobile devices. We won't have a separate app, but you can open it through Safari and you'll be able to see, or the customer will be able to see, um, the same information conveniently and will hopefully give them some solace and just peace of mind that their items are, are gone right now, but they're going to come back in better condition. Thanks, Ryan. So just want to talk a little bit about this portal, why it matters so much. Um, we talk about kind of this, this Grand Canyon divide between the, the carrier and the contractor on any given pack out. And then we, and then to further it, the, the policyholder as well. Essentially what we want to do is we want to eliminate any and all redundancy on all pack outs and all contents claims, be it a total loss, uh, be it a full on pack out where you're cleaning, maybe a storage pack out and on site cleaning, anything that, that involves content manipulation. We want to um, have no redundancy and we want to have complete transparency into the claim. And we want to kind of bring this, this three legged stool together. So where the, the policyholder, the adjuster and the contractor are now working collaboratively uh, for a much more continuous user experience. Um, as, as Watley's very eloquently um, illustrated today, customer satisfaction, keeping them happy, can streamline so much. And if we can eliminate a lot of these problems right at the root, um, then they'll, they'll never arise. Um, so with that, um, that, that's kind of what we wanted to share today. We want to transition uh, for the last few minutes into a, a question and answer session and see if, if you have any questions on anything we've discussed today or maybe um, future developments uh, of content track as well. So, so let me restate the question to everybody here. So he's saying, well, what if I just want to, uh, what if I just want to um, show the, the cleanable items as opposed to the cleanable, the total loss, and the items that are going to be um, stored as well. Um, we're looking at putting some different filters into it for what you will and will, be not, will not be able to share as far as what you want to keep internal, what you want to keep external, that kind of thing. And that's certainly something that we'll look at. Yeah, we appreciate that feedback. And as I said, it's, we're building it now. So any feedback you do have or certain options are Greatly appreciated. Other questions? Access to see if they have viewed it or not? Yeah. Do you want to take that one, Kelly? So essentially, uh, portal, essentially right? what's that? In the customer portal? Yeah, essentially if there will be data analytics. Yeah, okay. Jared. Yeah, that, Jared Jurth is the customer portal guy at Claymax. <laughs> Share. Does that answer your question, Holly? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, other questions, clarifications from anybody? Okay, 
Um, just want to say thanks, everybody, uh, for coming to the Content Strike Breakout and look forward to seeing you back here next year.